Good morning. It is day 10 in our 21-day study uh, on prayer and fasting. And uh, as I've been going through the guide that's been provided by Foursquare, it has been so good. Today's topic is that Jesus is our deliverer. The subline says, praise the Lord, for he breaks the chains that bind us to sin and the world. The uh, prompt is that since the beginning, God has been breaking the chains of unhealthy patterns, unjust practices, and unholy powers that have kept his people from experiencing abundant kingdom life. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection offer deliverance from that which keeps us bound to sin and destruction, opening the door to life everlasting. The scripture readings for today are found in 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. And I, and I think about deliverance. I think about, um, when I think about deliverance, I think about redemption. And so I have a few additional scriptures that, that come to mind today. And the first one that I want to share uh, that came up almost immediately is found in Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. It says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold. And and, and that one that one blessed me so much because um, the psalmist uh, totally gets it. But uh, we, we've seen a number of songs and hymns and spiritual songs that have come from the book of Psalms. And and we see uh, we see these themes, this deliverer theme, the redeemer theme. Um, I, I can, you know, honestly, most of us can think of the song, My Redeemer Lives, right? Um, and, and so that led me to another scripture. As, as Peter is sharing uh, what Jesus did and, and the storyline that led up to the point uh, of the time of Jesus with the crowd, he shares a, a uh, prophecy from the book of Joel that many of us know from Joel chapter 2. But look, look at what it says. Often we miss this part. We, we see the, you know, the, the, um, the spirit falling, but we don't see the part in verse 32. It says, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, also known as delivered, all right? <laughs> For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. As the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And so, you know, we, we see that, that language, and whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's prominent. We, we talk about that all the time, that he wanted deliverance to go out. That um, <clears throat> a word that, that you see in Scripture, especially in the book of Ruth, is kinsman redeemer. He came to redeem. He came to pay a debt that no one else could pay. He was willing to pay it, and he redeemed all his people by his life, by his blood shed on the cross. So Jesus is our deliverer. He has redeemed us from death. If we call on his name, we will be saved. Amen? I want to share the prayer and reflections with you. Number one, pray for those who need deliverance from sin that is keeping them from experiencing the fullness of God's love and grace. Uh, the, the, the thing that's powerful to tell people and remind people is though we were sinners, though we were evil, he still died for you and for me. Now it's time to accept him to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and experience the fullness of his love and grace. Number two, pray for people to be delivered from institutions, systems, or leaders that prevent them from living the abundant, flourishing lives that God has, has ordained. It doesn't mean that persecution won't come. It doesn't mean that attacks or battles won't come. But you will be living on a, a higher plane, if you will, because we are, we are in lockstep with the Holy Spirit. We are in lockstep with His will and mindset. And though those things come, we're able to soar above it. Number three, that we would pray for believers to boldly demonstrate the freedom that is found in Christ as they turn away from unhealthy patterns, unjust practices, and unholy powers to, the mo to model the hope of Christ's life, death, and resurrection through their radical love, gracious hospitality, and extraordinary generosity. What are we, what are we showing the world? Are we showing them hospitality, love, and generosity? Or are we doing what everybody else is doing? 
He said that they would know us by our love. Do they see the love? Do they see Jesus in us? I encourage you today, remind somebody, as it says here, pray and remind somebody, you have been redeemed. You have been delivered. Accept Jesus. Call on his name and you will be saved. You will be transformed from the inside out. He is good and he will keep you. He will guide you and he will guard you in all of your ways. Just trust him. I bless you today and we'll talk to you soon.